Hey YouTube, welcome back to my data structures in TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to go over algorithm analysis. So the first question you might ask is, why is analysis important? And analysis is important because we want to measure our algorithms and make sure that the ones that we create for scale are very efficient. So our programs must be fast even with millions of users. Companies like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, they serve millions of users every single day. And when your user base is that large, making the most efficient algorithm you can is very important. It's going to cost a lot of money. So how do we analyze programs? The first thought you might have is to try recording the actual time it takes for your code to finish running. So you press start before your algorithm finish and then you press end or you mark down the ending time when it finishes. So let's give an example. Let's say the prob you're given a problem and you have to find the word dictionary in a dictionary with 10 pages. And in this example, there's a slow computer and gaming computer. So obviously the gaming computer is faster than the slow computer. The slow computer's algorithm is something called binary search and it's something similar to what we do in real life as humans. We flip to the middle of the dictionary and let's say we flip to the middle and we see that the words start with M. Then we know since we're looking for a word that starts with D that it has to be, the, the word that we're looking for has to be in the first half of the book. So we disregard the second half of the book and look in the first half of the book. So every time we flip to a new page, we're cutting the book or search space in half. The gaming computer's algorithm is gonna be a brute force naive algorithm. It's gonna start at the first page and flip through every single page until it finds the word that it's looking for. So the slow computer finishes in six seconds and the gaming computer finishes in one second. So does that mean that the gaming computer's algorithm is better than the slow computer? Obviously intuitively not because we're not going to look through every single page. To show this, consider a dictionary with a million pages. Then the slow computer's algorithm takes one minute, whereas the gaming computer takes around 11 days. So obviously with scale and when the input size grows closer to infinity, the slow computer algorithm is quicker than the game computer, even though the slow computer takes longer to, to do some sort of operations on the RAM and stuff, it's still quicker than the game computer because the game computer has to go through every single page, possibly a million, before it finds the word dictionary. Whereas the slow computer can, you know, cut the search space by half. So when we analyze algorithms, we want to analyze them according to input size. What happens though if the gaming computer gets really lucky and finds the word on the first page? So for example, the problem got changed to finding the word apple, whereas the slow computer got changed, where the slow computer's algorithm takes one minute. In this case, we still want to consider the slow computer to have a better algorithm because we care what happens in the worst case. We want the worst case possible because at the end of the day, when you're, you know, when you have users on the other end of your software, the worst case behavior matters, not the best case. So it's great that the gaming computer was able to find the word Apple in one second, and this here should be Apple as well, but it's great that it did that, but still we want to consider the worst case. What's the worst case that these two algorithms can ever perform? So the way we analyze algorithm. So the way we analyze algorithms and programs with our two criteria that we found is something called big O analysis. Big O is a method to measure algorithms according to the criteria that we found. So we want to use the input size, large input size, so when, when n or the input size is closer to a million or infinity, and we also want to see what's the worst case behavior. Big O is an upper bound of the running time according to the input size in the worst case scenario, and we usually denote input sizes with n. So here are some constant big O runtimes. We have constant, logarithmic, linear, linear rhythmic, quadratic, exponential, and factorial. So because we only care about large input sizes, we're gonna drop constants and also ignore smaller terms. So the 1000 term here, we're gonna drop that because it's a constant, and we're also gonna ignore smaller terms. So the 2n squared, we're gonna ignore, and we're only left with the 8n cubed. And then at the end, we're still gonna drop the 8 because we're gonna drop constants and scalars as well. The reason why this matters is because when, think of n as the number of pages, right? When n approaches a million or infinity, 
the thousand is not really going to do much, and also the n squared. We only want the the most dominating term of the equation. So here we say that big O of this function is n cubed. Now, of course, big O is great for approximation, but in real life, constants really do matter. So if our runtime was 8,000 n cubed plus 2,000 n squared plus 1,000, and we drop constants and ignore smaller terms, then of course, n cubed is not gonna be the best approximation. We still want to minimize constants as much as we can, but big O gives us a good general overall analysis. So here is an example of constant runtime, which is big O of one. And we're gonna calculate how how, how many how many operations this function costs with function of n and n's are input size. So here there's no input, so you can already guess what it's going to be. But let's see the first line of code, const foo equals true. Assigning variables to two specific values in JavaScript costs one operation, and in any language in general. Doing some mathematics, some multiplication is cost one operation as well. Checking to see if a variable is less than 20, doing some predicate logic is one operation as well, and logging is one operation. Here we have a for loop from i equals zero to bar, which is 24. So this is going to be, this is going to run 24 times, and in each loop we're gonna, we're gonna cost one operation because we're just constantly logging the index. So really, this is one plus one plus one plus one plus 24 times one, and this is going to equal 24. 25 plus 6 7, 28. Because it's 28, we're gonna drop the constant, and we're gonna say the big O of f of n of this function is constant. So no matter how many times this function gets run, each time it's going to cost the same. It's, it's going to be um, 28. So it doesn't scale accordingly to the input size. So we're going to say this is constant. So the runtime for the function do random stuff is big O of 1. The next example is linear runtime. So there's this function called contains. And contains takes a target, which is a number. It takes two parameters, a target, which is a number, and an array of numbers. And it loops through the numbers and checks to see if the target is in the numbers. So when you're counting the amount, the cost of this function, we see there's a for loop, and this for loop depends on how big n is. So n times, so we're gonna say n is the length of the number array. So here, in this first example, when the array is three, we're gonna loop n times, and where n is the length of the array, so we're gonna loop one time. In the second example, n is, what is this, 8, 10? So we're gonna loop 10 times, right? So the cost we're gonna say is n times because we don't know what the input size will be ahead of time, but we just know it's n. And in each loop, we're gonna do a constant amount of work. No matter what the in input is, we're always gonna do this branch where it's checking to see if the current number that we're looping through is the target. And if it is, then we're going to return true. So we can see that we're going to loop. We're going to do we're going to do something, and the something is in this bracket n times. And the something in this function contains is one plus one operation. So this equals two n plus one. And since we drop constants, then or drop constants and scalars, this is going to be n. So big O of this function is big O of n, and the runtime for contains is big O of n. And as you can see. Intuitively, this makes sense because this, this function scales according to the, the, the time it takes to, to run this function scales according to how big this number array is. If this number array is a million, then it's going to take a million loops. If it's five, it's going to take five loops. So we say that this, the time for the contains function scales linearly according to the input size of the array number or the number array. The next function is a function called print pairs, which costs quadratic time. And in this function, we're looping through. We're gonna give a we're gonna get a number n as a parameter, and we're looping through the the first loop is from i equals one to i less than to equal to n. So this is we're looping n times, and in each loop, we're gonna do another loop, which is n minus one times because we're looping from j equals i plus one. So each time this inner loop, the starting the, the starting index of the inner loop increases, so it's n minus i. And we're just doing this constant log, which costs one operation. So the and as you can see, this this outer loop, you can think of you can think of the outer loop as each row, right? Because we go one, two, three, four, and each inner loop starting starting at the specific print. So each each inner loop always 
the inner the inner loop index increases each time the loop increases because it's i plus one. So when calculating the cost of this function, we see that the the outer loop is n times, so it's n times whatever is inside this loop. But we see again this is n minus i. So then we have to multiply by n minus i. This should be i times one. So if we expand this, this is going to be n squared minus 2n. And we drop the 2n, and then it becomes O of n squared. I don't know why I forgot to type that. I'm sorry. But it's n squared. You can, you can expand it and check it out for yourself. So big O of this function is n squared. So of course, 4, we can see that this is, we can see the maximum amount of operations it takes for this for this function is 16 because it's four on both sides even though there's not a any constant dot logs in this this lower triangle we can still see that the this is still an upper bound an upper bound is four times four and of course if print pairs is let's say we give 16 as an argument it's going to be 16 squared so the runtime is quadratic according to the number n so now we're going to go into logarithmic runtime and this contains function is similar to the one that we were looking at before, but this but this contains function runs in linear time because it searches through the entire array starting with the first one. So the runtime is big O of n, whereas this algorithm searches the looks at the middle, and based off the middle, decides whether or not to search in the first half or the second half of the sorted array. So this runs in logarithmic time. Here we see that outside of this loop. We're only gonna use three operations: let low equal zero and let high equal. So low, we're setting low and high, and we're also returning false, which each costs one operation. Uh, so we have three here. And then in this loop, this loop is gonna run log n times because each time the loop runs, we're cutting the search space in half. So we're cutting the the length of the array, which starts at n log n times until we get to an array with length one and if you don't intuitively understand what a logarithm means i you should you should look at you should not you should look into that um i don't really have time to explain it but basically a logarithm of a number is the amount of halvings it takes to get from that number down to one because it's asking what do you raise that number what do you raise to two to get to n so yeah so this is going to run log n times, and in this loop, we're doing a constant amount of work. It should actually be 4 times log n, but anyways, the function is 3 plus 4 times log n, and because we drop constants, then the big O of this function is log n. Here's an example of some combined runtime. So imagine we have a function random which takes in a number array called nums, and it passes this nums to foo, bar, and baz. And we know that foo costs quadratic time so it's it runs quadratically so it's big o of n squared we know bar runs linearly and we know that baz <laughs> the runtime of baz that's funny to say is logarithmic so then the total time it takes for this function random to run is foo which is n squared plus bar which is n plus baz which is log n but because we drop because we only consider the most dominating term then we say that the function, the, the big O of the function is n squared because we drop the n and log n. So that was a quick overview of big O and algorithm analysis. And to end off, we can see that these functions really, really, I guess, differ when n increases. So here we can see that you can imagine the lines as the time it takes for the algorithm to finish. So constant means that no matter, and you can see the x-axis is the size of the input data, and the y-axis is the time to complete. So for constant amount of time, it doesn't matter if n is one or n is a million, it's always gonna run, it's always gonna lay horizontal and stay constant. Whereas log n is going to rise a little bit, but then taper off into, so it's gonna be capped off. n is going to grow linearly, so one for one slope, and then we have linear rhythmic, and then we have quadratic, and then we have exponential factorial. So you can clearly see that measuring algorithms really matter because we want to make sure that we create the, the best algorithm possible. So going back to the very first example that we were introduced with, even though the gaming computer might be able to have faster operations, so I might be able to assign a variable and do if checks and looping faster than the slow computer, because the algorithm 
takes linear amount of time, big O of n, and because the slow computer is logarithmic, then with large, very large input sizes, the slow computer will win. And you can see maybe in the starting when the size of the input data, data like the dictionary, if it was small like 10, we wouldn't see that much of a difference because functions don't really, we don't really see a difference until n is large. That's why we only care when the input size is large. So yeah, that's it for algorithm analysis and I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about arrays. See you.